We've come here today to discuss the Keystone XL pipeline, a literal and figurative line in the sands, which signifies whether our country has the courage, the commitment, and the capacity to be a global leader in addressing the challenge of climate before it's too late. Keystone is the economic key to unlocking the tar sands, and as such, it fails the president's test. Let me be clear, the reality is this. A yes on Keystone means more oil will be extracted and significantly more carbon pollution will be put in the air. A no on Keystone means less oil will be extracted and significantly less carbon pollution. If we do not act now to reduce the pollution we're putting into the air, we will face irreversible climatic changes. These changes will come at a catastrophic cost, both human and economic. Now, I left my 30-year job as a professional investor to focus full-time on this issue. I do think it's our generational challenge, and I do think that history will ask whether we did everything we could to meet it. To me, climate change is not just an environmental issue. It's a human issue. It's about leaving a better world for the generations to come. And of course, we are at Georgetown, as Governor Granholm said, because it was here that President Obama drew his own personal line in the sand. The president said the Keystone XL pipeline would only be approved if the project does not significantly exacerbate the problem of carbon pollution. Now, I've spoken on this topic before and said that Keystone XL is a bad deal for America and doesn't serve our national interests. It has no meaningful impact on American jobs or energy security, and it does pose an enormous risk to our environment and furthers our dangerous dependence on oil. Building the pipeline is a very long-term commitment measured in decades to some of the dirtiest oil in the world when we need to be reducing carbon pollution and changing the direction of our energy system. The beneficiaries are foreign investors, foreign consumers, and the oil industry, which plans to ship the oil to our economic competitors. But today I'm here as an investor and a business person to talk about how Keystone XL will shift the economics of the Canadian tar sands production, the dollars in and the oil out in a way that would be disastrous for our climate. The bottom line is Keystone XL unlocks more reserves and more production and locks in more pollution. Because the pipeline will make tar sands production more profitable, it will drive further investment and more production, essentially creating its own production cycle. The pipeline unlocks more reserves and more production, and it locks in more pollution. Canada's oil resources are much bigger than people understand. Alberta is acknowledged to have the third largest proved crude oil reserve in the world after Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. But this number actually dramatically understates what could be recovered. The original oil in place, the actual physical measure of what's in the ground in those three areas, is at least 10 times the amount of proved reserves, between 1.8 trillion barrels and 3.1 trillion barrels. Based on today's proved reserves, Production is already projected to more than double by 2025, and the industry is on track to beat those projections, depending on their ability to transport the increased production, depending on their ability to actually deliver the product. And that's where Keystone XL comes in. But Keystone XL plays a larger role than just added transportation capacity. Let's step back one more second. Canadian tar sands are not a normal oil reserve. They are a gigantic bitumen mining project, far from any market. Keystone XL is critical to developing the tar sands profitably because it does enable more hydrocarbons to be transported, but also because it transports them at a lower cost compared to trucks or rail, and it provides access to the world market, enabling the oil barrels to be sold at a higher price than is available today. Let's start just with the capacity question. 
Keystone XL, which would transport up to 830,000 barrels per day, is only part of the enabling solution. To meet its aggressive goals, the industry needs all five of the proposed pipeline projects, and even then, capacity won't meet production by 2030. You can also see from this chart that rail capacity is minuscule compared to the amount of oil currently being moved by pipeline. The State Department's draft EIS predicted that rail shipments of Canadian tar sands would reach 200,000 barrels per day by the end of this year, which is just one quarter of the capacity of the Keystone XL. Some people say this number can rise even by a lot, but the bottom line is rail will only provide a fraction of the additional capacity that is needed. Even the industry and Canadian officials conceded that rail is not a substitute for Keystone XL in terms of capacity. The State Department estimates are that the pipeline can ship it at approximately $10 a barrel, and rail is $15 to $20 a barrel in their estimates, and other reports say it could spike up to $30 a barrel. Investors see rail as only a short-term solution to get the tar sands to market, not a long-term economical alternative to new pipelines. That's why the oil industry is pushing aggressively to build the Keystone XL pipeline, because the tar sand production can then be expanded safely. But even more than that, Keystone is an essential enabler for further tar sands development. The maximum growth cannot happen without it, given logistical and economic constraints. But beyond increasing capacity and lowering transportation costs, the Keystone XL pipeline would enable tar sands oil to be sold at higher world market prices by providing direct access to the refineries on the Gulf Coast. If you look at the chart, Canadian crude has historically sold at a discounted price relative to West Texas Intermediate. The bitumen from the tar sand essentially floods the market, enabling buyers in Canada to charge discounts by reducing transportation costs and enabling tar sands oil to be sold at higher prices Keystone XL would increase profit margins for the producers, and that justifies more investment and drives further production in a cycle that locks us into the development of substantially more dirty oil. By driving this investment, by making it look like a much better deal up front, Keystone XL is locking us into higher proved reserve levels, more production, and more carbon pollution. For this reason, Keystone XL is a very smart investment for those who stand to profit from accelerated and expanded tar sands production. Let's just see who those people are. Number one is the oil industry. Oil companies will see higher margins and increased investment in production out of the tar sands. Secondly, Alberta. The Canadian Energy Research Institute predicts that Alberta will collect 1.2 trillion dollars in royalties from the tar sands over the next 35 years. And the other people who will really profit from this pipeline are foreign investors, specifically Chinese investors. One third of the foreign investment in Canadian tar sands comes from China. China needs this pipeline for their energy independence. That is why they're investing, at least in significant part then that is why we say this pipeline runs through America, not to America, and why we say that tar sands oil is destined to be exported around the world. It's a great deal for China and other oil-hungry nations to which the oil will be exported, and for the foreign investors who stand to profit from increased production. But Keystone XL is not a good deal for the American people, who will bear the environmental, and economic risks of a spill without seeing any of the profits. The reality is this, a yes on Keystone means more oil will be extracted and significantly more carbon pollution put into the air. A no on Keystone means less oil will be extracted and significantly less carbon pollution. President Obama said our national interest will only be served if this project does not significantly exacerbate the problem of carbon pollution. I hope that the president will take a hard look at the economics. If he does, he will see that Keystone XL fails his climate test and is certainly 
not in the interest of the United States.